Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Many blessings to all of you. This is, of course, another video about Franz Barden and initiation into Hermetics. I am backtracking a little and going into the theory part of the book and starting at the beginning with the elements, which are very important. And I think one of the problems with the theory component of the book is it can tend to be information overload. And there's so much information given that one can end up thinking you have to know it all. And basically you have to recognize it in yourself. I came to Barden after many years of spiritual searching and I recognized his theory as true. I recognized it as fitting with my own view of the cosmos. And then, of course, I saw a way where you could take this and you could move beyond and you could go into accomplishing things that would otherwise seem supernatural. And you could use all of this, this theory for your benefit in the training of the, the different components of the cosmos and your own being. So I always do best if I talk from my own personal experience, and that'll be the way I'll do it with the elements. I'll just talk about how I've integrated it. And when I mean integrated it, I mean it's something I live with all the time, every moment of every day. I experience myself like this. I don't have to train myself to think about it or memorize a certain code. I recognize it in myself. This is the way I am. This is the way I imagine my being. This is the way I experience my being, etc., etc. And I personally choose a little bit slightly different color scheme than Barden because I picture the elements analogous or in similar colors to the way they appear in the physical world. And of course, the metaphysical elements are analogs and derivatives of the actual physical elements in the world. It's just a deeper level of experience and everything is in plus minus, magnetic, electrical, and so let's just get down to it. And this is the way I experience my being. First, going horizontally. I'll go horizontally across my being, and then I'll go vertically from the bottom up to my being, the way I experience the elements. So they're all descending from the Akasha. And if we go horizontally from right to left, and I am a right-handed person, I have fire on the right side of my body. The right side of my body, like from here over here, is fire. And it's electrical, and it's positive. And it's descending from the Akasha right here. And on the left side, I have water and it's negative, magnetic, and I picture the water as a deep blue, like an ocean or river. I picture the fire as that red-orange color that fire is when you see it, and that's how I experience it all of the time. And so those are the two major elements, the two ones that um, are primary and come first from the Akasha, and so that's my horizontal experience of my own being. Now, if we go vertically from the bottom up, we're going to have all four elements. And so in the thighs and in the tailbone kind of area, I will have the earth element. And I experience the earth element as containing all of the elements together and kind of binding them into physical form. And that's in the lower part of my body and my legs and very much in my thighs. And that is a green and a brown because where I live, the earth is mainly green and brown. 
So that's the color scheme that, that fits. And that's how I will experience my, my legs. And then you go into the abdomen area and the genitals going up to the solar plexus. And I experience that as water, as basically magnetic and negative and uh, a kind of deep blue. Water's gonna have more to do always with empathy and feeling and sensitivity. I mean, people that basically consider themselves empaths, for example, you might have heard of that word, are usually very high on the water element and very low on the fire because the fire has more to do with willpower and saying no and setting boundaries and making firm decisions. And so empaths are often very much uh, high on the water element and taking on other people's in, uh, energy all of the time and getting overloaded with just the overall energy of the world. And that also describes me. That is the kind of natural default area I have of going more into water and being weak on fire. So, um, to go back to it, you have the earth as green and brown in me, in the legs, and you have the water in the abdomen, and ge the genitals going up to the, sum to the solar plexus in a deep blue, like an ocean or a river. And then in the chest area, we have the neutralizing component, the air between fire and water the air, neutralizing them all, and giving air to my lungs, and um, really doing a great service. I love air, you know, because it's also the kind of emptiness of the Buddhist is air, you know, the kind of emptiness or nothingness of uh, some of the forms of Buddhism that appear in the Buddhist teachings and Zen especially um, has a lot of air to it, a lot of air and earth actually. And so that's in the chest area, the air, and I picture that as sky blue and that's neither negative or positive. That's neutralizing the negative and positive in fire and water. And so with the fire element, yes, you have the neck and the head and that's the reddish orange, that's electrical, and that's positively charged. And so in between those two, you have the air neutralizing. And I say this is how I have integrated it and understood my being. And it may be slightly different for you. It's kind of like taking all of the information in theory and recognizing what's true for you in it what's true for yourself, what's true of your own intuition, your own experience of yourself. And you may be limited. You may have life circumstances that get in the way. You may have a million different proclivities in your personality that shape in a certain form, but it's taking in as much as you can of the theory section of the book and checking it with your own intuition in your own experience and making it your own and not really even making it your own. It's more like recognizing it as your own. Yes, that's me. Okay, the Akasha is what I've been calling this and think of as this, you know, the fire is this. And so that's kind of, you know, I think what has to happen with each individual. And if you've heard my videos, and I now have the Franz Barden podcast also, I should announce, um, and you've heard some of my podcasts, you know that I'm big on the subjective personal component, because each person differs completely, and I cannot emphasize that enough. And um, now in a left-handed person, the horizontal would probably be reversed. Um, and you probably have the dominant hand left as fire and then the off hand as, as water. So there would be some sort of reversal in the horizontal for a left-handed person. But I'm right-handed, most people are right-handed. So, um, you know, I've given that kind of example with me. 
And this is something that, that is a joy to me. This is, this is not something that's like, you know, a strain to live with. This is something that's fantastic to have. And that's a fantastic way of experiencing myself and having the elements in balance and having them all in harmony gives me a great feeling. I feel like I'm walking on air, you know, and these Barden practices are fun. They are fun for me. I do not want to be an armchair occultist and just read all the time. Then magic starts to seem like something that's just undoable and you know not to mention you're missing the fun of actually doing it and it's going to take people different amounts of time different types of um you know processes i think it's very individualized i've seen a lot of different patterns in clients and different things people can get hung up on um, some people can get really hung up on taking things too concretely or too literally. You know, Barden did not like religious dogma. And likewise, we shouldn't turn Barden himself into a new kind of dogma and just recreate, okay, he didn't like religious dogma, but this initiation into hermetics, this is dogma and I've got to follow it to a T. You know, and it's really about making it your own. And the name of the game in this is achieving all the abilities that he lists in the steps in, in one through 10 in initiation into hermetics. The name of the game is achieving all of the capacities. And so as long as you do that, you win. It kind of reminds me of Larry Bird in basketball. He had real bad form according to like you know, people teaching the fundamentals of shooting form, you know, in basketball, but it went in every time. He was a great shot. So who's gonna argue with his form if it goes in, you know? And so it's kind of like finding what works for you is a big component of that. And of course I'm available to help. You can always just email me at thegraveyardcowboy at gmail.com, thegraveyardcowboy at gmail.com and we can set up a free consultation over the phone or Zoom. Um, but anyways, not to, not, to, not to interrupt the flow with promoting myself, but I am here to help. I've seen different patterns with different people getting stuck and many blessings to all of you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.